Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a couple of these feathers. Now this is from the miniature Enchanted Forest. The picture is also in the main Enchanted Forest book as well. And I'm going to do um, show you how I did them. Um, I put a picture recently of the page I did in the main Enchanted Forest book where I did metallic feathers, gold and silver, and I got a lot of interest in that and requests on how I did it. So I thought I would just make a video showing you a couple. So I'm going to zoom in a little. Now it is easier to do this. Ugh, sorry, my tripod fell over tripod no, sorry about that right so it is easier to do this on the bigger book um, than the smaller one but as I've finished my bigger book I thought I'd have a go on the little one so I'm just going to choose a random feather and do a gold one and then I shall do a silver one for you as well so we're going to start with this one I think as it's nicely in shot and we're going to start with gold so the first colour I start with is a dark brown. I tend to just pick an, a random one. This is polychromos and this is a burnt umber. You can use any dark brown from your set. It needs to be quite sharp for this smaller book. Um, but for your bigger book, you might not need it quite so sharp. And I just do a small thin layer around the very outside to start with. Now, need to blend the colours together, the layers of colour. And this is a little bit tricky on such a small feather. The ideal would be to do a really dark bit and then fade it towards the middle a bit. But we don't have a lot of space. Because now I've got to put a layer against the, this middle part of the feather. But what I find is with the feathers that have got this pattern on that Johanna's drawn for us, it's very forgiving when it comes to blending. It hides quite a lot. So I'm just doing a little dark bit on all these little pieces as well. Oh, I went massively out of the lines there. I'm finding it quite hard to see this morning, but never mind. So that's our first one. So this is our dark brown. So whatever pencil set you've got, you can pick a dark brown. And then I move to a light brown. Now I'm going to pick this one which is the, I'm trying to see, it's the brown ochre but you can see it's significantly lighter than this one. It's quite a big jump actually but I find it works okay. So I tend to overlap or go over the top of the original colour a little bit. Um, ideally you would leave a bit of the dark colour that you not that you didn't go over the top of but as I say because this is quite small it's quite difficult to do that so I tend to just go right over it probably I can't even see that well to know whether I am leaving any but there we go and again with this little bit it's quite difficult just do a little touch especially on these teeny bits I feel like I need a magnifying glass for some of these. Next one I go for is the green gold. It's too small, it hasn't got the name on it, but this is the green gold. And again, just moving inwards towards the centre of the feather. Trying to make sure I blend it in as well as I can. sort of going over the top of what I've done and extending the colour out towards the centre of the feather and again trying to make sure you've still got a fair bit of white on these little bits it's so hard to see that one so that's the next layer then I go for this one which is the light yellow ochre so this is a brownish yellow and again over the top and pulling that colour out towards the centre of the feather. Now if you're doing a larger feather, you know, you might, these layers will be bigger, um, wider sort of thing, because you're covering, you have more feather to cover. And again, 
again just a little bit down here can't really see what I'm doing it's not really sharp enough now I go for this yellow here now this is number 185 I'm holding it completely out of shot so you can't see it I'm just going to look up for you what that's called because I can't remember bear with me that's Naples yellow it's all in the description anyway the names of them all I will pop it all in as I always do now you can see we're getting really close to the center now but I need to make sure that I still leave that white line you also notice this side is thicker than this side so we need a thicker layer on this side especially here where it's thicker so start to think about the shape of the feather and you can also now start to see that gold effect coming again need just a touch down here actually I'm going to sharpen this really sharp it's good English isn't it I'm going to sharpen it really sharp I'm going to put my head a bit closer you might see my hair in camera now I don't know to get those little tiny bits in But there we go. And lastly, I'm going to grab a, oops, not that one, this yellow. This is the light cadmium yellow. I'm just going to sharpen that as well. Now, this is my last yellow. Now, one thing I need to be very careful of is to leave some white. The white helps us create the shine, which makes it look metallic, but I don't want too much so I'm just trying to shorten or narrow that space now this yellow is very vibrant and warm and I find it it can benefit from going over the whole of it with it not this centerpiece um, to sort of brighten and warm the whole thing you see and then down here still need to make sure I leave a little white gap on these so that they look like they're shining too as I say that's quite messy down there because it's only a small space so that's our gold feather and I think I'm going to do this one in the silver as it's quite close by now for silver we've really only got greys so I tend to work my way through the cold greys in the polychromo set um, so this is the cold grey six um, we may not get down through all of them because it's quite a thin feather basically just work down until you get to the point where you run out of space I'm just going to give this one a sharpen so it's really the same technique so we start with the darkest one in the middle here whoops I know we haven't done the centre of the other one, we'll do those together when, uh, when we're done. So all the way around the edge. So as you can see I'm ignoring um, Johanna's detailing on these, um, partly because it's not going to fit in with this effect, but also um, these are quite small in this miniature book. So uh, you can just enjoy looking at them through what you colour. I think you don't have to colour in each little circle and line and that sort of thing. Sorry, just concentrating on this bit. Small. My eyes aren't very... This morning I'm struggling to see. I think I'm still half asleep. Okay, that's that one. So now we just move to the next grey, which should be the cold grey five. I'm just going to sharpen again. I really should have sharpened in advance. I'm sharpening using my Stedler Norris Club. I've just put a new blade in my in it and it's really lovely. Nice and sharp. So as we did with the last one, just slightly overlap and widen that line a little bit. Now this feather is thinner than this one, so we've got less space. But if we run out of space, we can just not put in all the shades of grey so uh, just overlapping and actually with the grey because 
with the with the gold we were jumping around colour to colour with the grey we're just moving along the colour scale from the tin and the colours are all quite close together it does make it actually easier to blend them together because they're closer okay so to grab the next one which is the cold grey four again I'm going to sharpen now if you are um, thinking of um, changing the blades in your sharpener do be careful um, obviously blades are sharp and when you remove them you can cut yourself what I did was I used a screwdriver I didn't do this one actually my husband did it for me but when I do it I use a magnetic screwdriver so I just handle the blade with the screwdriver I never touch it with my hand so that helps okay so we're doing exactly the same as we did with the first one just moving through the colours we're now on cold grey 3 again need sharpening and you can see that it's the same technique as the gold I think I like the gold I like gold better because it's a very warm colour I do enjoy warm colours I find yellows quite difficult to shade and colour with but I seem to have mastered gold which is rather nice, just lots of practice basically. Um, certain books of Johanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly for example calls for a lot of gold so uh, it gave me a lot of practice. Now these were almost there with the white, there's hardly any white so I'm going to make this the last layer on these little bits. I can get away without, with the gold it's trickier you need to make sure there's some yellow in it but with this because they're all greys it doesn't matter we're on to our cold grey three now this would probably be our last layer so I'm just going to close that gap in the middle on this as I said we're not going to worry about that bottom bit because we've done our last bit there we just want to make sure there's still some white because the white is what makes it look like it is shiny and I think we're done with that now the sort of I don't know what these bits are called the center bits now I tend to do those in a gray as well but I use a warm gray I'm using the warm gray for I just pick that I think that'll be okay I don't want it too dark but I shall just press gently now if you've got like um, prismas you'd use a French grey, maybe a more browny grey. And I'm actually going to make it darker at each end and fade it a bit towards the middle. But I'm not going to leave white on that one because I don't want it to look really shiny because it might take from the shine on the feather. There we go. Now I'm going to release this video as a little extra rather than one of my dailies because people have been asking for it and I have been promising it and I have been um, a bit busy um, so I haven't been able to do it so I'm going to just release it now. So those people who subscribe will get a notification that uh, that it's come. Other people might miss it so uh, do subscribe um, if you want to know when all my videos come out you can hit the bell when you subscribe and you'll always get a notification so if they come out in the middle of the day like this one will you'll know it's there and uh, you won't miss it and you'll sort of be able to get to see it as soon as it comes out if you've got the time so and it's free to subscribe just click just tick it and you can unsubscribe at any time if the notifications start to get on your wick so, so it might, but it might be worth doing. Right, I've blathered on for long enough. There are the feathers. I hope you like them and I hope that was useful. Thank you so much for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>